been there and done that. And now the baddest of the rock gods methodically analyze and dissect musical notes, compositions, and riffs that made them go from the stage to the couch. This is my favorite riff. Here's your host, Nikki Six. Nikki Six here with Phil Colin, Def Leppard, one of my favorite people. What's happening, buddy? Oh, good, loving it. Gonna Loving do my being favorite here. riff. Right, right on. Yeah. And um, I just like when I hear those Def Leppard records. Some of those parts are so well written, and I kind of wanted you to like break down some of them. Sure. For me. Even some of the picking stuff. We were talking earlier about Eddie Van Halen and some yeah. of the palm muting and stuff. So. Um, I guess my question is, you know, you were playing the one thing uh, from one of your songs a second from ago. From Hysteria, yeah. Yeah, from Hysteria. Can you just play that for one sure. second? Sure. Uh. Well, that goes under the chorus. Yeah, we, yeah, I, yeah. And one of the things, again, Matt Lang would, would, would do, even with vocals or anything, you must never be gratuitous. Like okay. even like that is is there's is one of probably about ten parts on the chorus of hysteria. Yeah. It goes I get hysteria girl, hysteria when you get that feeling and it's got all that stuff, but that's going yeah. underneath it. Yeah. And, and there's another one going. And then there's and then you've got that mutant. Yeah. It sounds just like the record, but there's so many guitar parts. How do you pick your part? You combine a couple of them. So okay. like, for example, like instead of, I, I would do... Make it more chordal, and then the very mm -hmm. last measure, I'd go... And Vivian would play... You play that part, and, and yeah. the hard part is actually singing while, while you're playing there. Yeah. Um, we, we had a thing, Love Bites, the, the song went to number one in Billboard, and we'd never played it as a band. Right. It was a studio thing, so we had to rehearse for two days to, to get it. It's it was, not easy. Oh my God, it was so hard, and, yeah. and that whole thing, because you take the most prominent parts yeah. and make a little collage of them, then you have to sing over the top of it, and that, that was always the hardest part. So when you, when you were like... You know, growing up, we talked about one of your first concerts being like Deep Purple. Yeah. What are some of your first early riffs that you remember maybe uh, playing them on the guitar, going, I can do this? Um, I, I, funny enough, like Richie Blackmore, you know, I could play, you know, the. That stuff earlier on because I, I, I like the solos. Yeah. You know, it, it, it and, and, and to play them, they were melodic. A absolutely. So it wasn't just noise, right? Uh, for no reason. That was like actually, as a player, you yes. Could, like you, you know, kind of what you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. And the smoke on the water riff. I mean, just, just great. All, all of that stuff. They were really kind of, you could hum them. And I think with guitar yeah. solos or riffs, you got to be able to sing them. Even, yeah. even drum parts. You know, the Phil Collins, you know, in the air tonight. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You, we all air drum it, and yeah. that's that's what got me hooked. You know. Mm -hmm. All the young dudes, yeah. you know. David Bowie wrote it, but it <laughs> Bronson wrote that part, or Bowie? I and heard that, a demo. That part. You okay? With Mark Bolan playing it, so I think it was more wow. or less a Bowie thing. And, and this is a really interesting story. Joe, like we said, collects things and, mm -hmm. and comes across things. Um, and had a version of, of it with, I think with uh, uh, Bolan on it, but also had a, a version with um, Mick Ronson and David Bowie on it, sing, Bowie right. singing it. Yeah. And Mott the Hoople playing it, but with Ronson as well. Wow, I'd and love he mentioned to hear it. those. Me too, I mean, I did hear it, but he, uh, he, he, he met Bowie and said, oh, I've got this, and Bowie said, oh, can you send it to me? So he did, he actually sent him a, a, yeah. a version of it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I think, you know, Mick Ronson, who was my, one of my favorite of players of all time. And, and he doesn't get as much credit from guys outside of our Right, world. I agree. Um, I guess that, you know, the Bowie thing was so influential, but then he kind of left. Yeah. And then the Bowie thing went in a different direction. That, that was it, yeah. Uh, but what a, what a, I mean, his solo records. Yeah, yeah, just the playing, that, that, yeah. that Les Paul and 
I got to play that as well, actually. You that, played that yeah, part? Yeah. Wow. And I met him in a pub years ago in London, and he, and he had it, and he was just the most genuine guy. And I'm like, whoa. Again, <laughs> is that your guitar? He goes, yeah, you have a go. And I'm like, whoa, fantastic. Yeah, so. yeah Bob Rock uh, was friends with him and yeah. would tell me the same thing. And uh, he ended up getting uh, his wah from his wife. Really? His wife said, you know, Mick would have wanted you to have Fantastic. That. But that stuff, wow. you know, the gear. Like, yeah. You know, we, we, we love the gear. Give me a little uh, snapshot of like, kind of your, your gear right now. My, my gear, well, I, I do this whenever we do Delta Deep shows. And, and you know, I've done the G4 guitar thing with Joe Setriani. I just use that, just mm -hmm. crank it up. I also done a thing. And that gets uh, pretty loud, huh? Uh, yeah, it does. And, you, you, you know, I was doing a thing without bragging, but I got yeah. to play with Jeff Beck in Japan oh, last year. Oh, come on. And what Jimmy Page, like? well, it was great because yeah. Jimmy Page is, was going, I can't hear Phil's guitar. Can we get it turned up? This is Jimmy Page. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is so cool. So they went and, and I got two cabs and with one of these and then they yeah. cranked it up. But um, So that's really what I used then. And I, I ended up doing uh, three th three songs with, with Jeff Beck and uh, yeah. some solo stuff as well. And we, we Def Leppard had been honored. We got an album of the year. So that was in yeah. Tokyo. That, that was awesome. I remember seeing some stuff about that. Yeah, it was I, crazy. Uh, I feel that like, I interviewed Jeff once, yeah, and they were like, um, you know, Jeff wants to to do the show, and and we he wasn't planned, and I always want to have like my homework done, sure, you yeah, know, out of respect, and he came in, and I just remember going, this is going to be the worst day of my life because it's one of my heroes, yeah, you know? he's such a nice man, great, such a great guy, but I wouldn't want to play guitar with him. Well, it, what, what was great, like? I, it was amazing because I ended up just we we done. Um, superstition right so he, he wanted to do that and I, I i know how to sing it as well and so we we another great riff you know something yeah. i wish i'd have written you know, on a <laughs> guess so yeah he's playing that so i got up and he said oh come up and sing so i, I come up and sung and then he said are you going to stay on for bex bolero and i said well I don't know the chords and he said well just just come in on the heavy bit and so i, I kind of learned it by the time we got on to do the show, I actually learned yeah. the rest of the. That's thing. a scary song, by the way. It is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but you know, he set the bar. He, do, he and really you know what? He's bar. one of the only guys who's improved like that. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, big respect for Eric Clapton, love him, and all that stuff. All, all those guys kind of stopped. He Beck kept progressing, yeah. and I got to say, just standing on stage with him, I was just kind of watching him. And he's doing, you know, all that. <laughs> And it's just it's just coming out like that. It's like, whoa, this is Jeff Beck. Sounds like Jeff Beck, and it yeah. is. Yeah. And it was amazing. He he was just incredible. It just blew me away. I've never seen anyone play guitar like that. Yeah, I, uh, I've watched some you know stuff on YouTube with him, and it, at times it's it's almost like the Wild West. He just goes in, and it's almost like I don't even know if he knows where he's going, but he makes he makes he yes. goes to the note. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've seen those bins he has. I know, right? It's like crazy. You know. It's totally unique, and that there isn't anyone like him. Actually. No, there there really isn't, and such aggression in that. And, yeah, um, I love how how aggressive you play too, and you talked oh, about with the brass. Yeah, the brass pick and thirteens. Yeah, the strings. Yeah, it, it just it's got a different kind of you know essence to it. Play, it sounds like Def Leppard. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, is that, is that like something that you you know when you when you play something, you go, this sounds like it's right for the guys. Um, no, I just play like that anyway. Yeah. I think it's, it just comes out like that. Yeah. 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 It's it's, it's fantastic. What's um, what would you say are like your, you know, maybe your top five guitar guys? Uh, Hendrix, mm -hmm. um, Jeff Beck. Mm -hmm. um, Mick Ronson was was absolutely, uh, and I, I actually spent a lot of time listening to Al Miola when I first started playing. You know, because all uh, his stuff was just crazy. It was like, Precision. yeah, it's just crazy. You know, just like. You know. you know, Gary Moore and all that stuff as well. I loved all that. So I spent a lot of time just just listening to to that and Blackmore, you know, that's that's really yeah. what what got me kind of going in the first place. Yeah. What's the uh, the 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 strangest guitar player that we may think that you listen to or might have influenced you? 
Well, John McLaughlin, you know, cause I know it was jazz and and and, uh, but the Hendrix thing is, I I still don't think anyone comes close to that. He was so, yeah. it was such a, a, it was blues, it was soul, it was funk. It was like mm -hmm. he was being channeled, mm -hmm. you know, and and such a great artist. And and yeah, still someone's no one has ever come close to that. I don't think. Yeah. And not that many records. Not no. really, no. Considering to yeah, considering the legacy. Yeah, that, that I always wonder what some of these guys would have done musically if they would have still yeah. been around. Yeah, you know, um, you know, what's your what's your favorite Def Leppard riff that you could play for me right now? I do like all the stuff in Hysteria. You know, it's yeah. um, you know, the, the, the whole thing. Yeah, that's such a good That's actually I remember Rick when Savage I first when that. I first heard oh, what? That, was? That, that part is actually. Really? Rick when Savage, I first yeah, heard yeah. that I was like I, I figured that out. Yeah. It's like I gotta nick this. This it's, is like, it's really great. Yeah. yeah, do you do that when you hear stuff you go, I like that and maybe Absolutely. you take a note out and without a doubt, yeah. yeah. Just like that. But or even the intention of it. The intention know? of yeah. it, yeah. Because um another one that was actually similar to that, you know, was um the police, you know, every breath you take. Yeah. I, I mean that you know that's uh, you know that's really hard to sing and play. But yeah. There's a really a lot of stretching. A lot of stretching. Doesn't sound like every breath you take. Every move you make. It's and that's the beauty of it because it sounds so simple and and yes, but it it's does. really hard. You know the, that you know. Yeah. No, it's a struggle. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to play that live. No, know? right? Especially singing it as well. But, you know, obviously, yeah. with, when the police done it, Andy, Andy would play a telly up there. And yeah. It was, it was well, great. I, th I think that's like the beauty of, <coughs> of Def Leppard. You know, I, you know, I, I understand as a musician who's been in the studio and done some pretty deep records, like with Bob Rock and stuff, the work that goes into it and understanding your music when I hear it. But I just, I hear a song. Right. I hear a song. Absolutely. It works. You know, whatever the song is, I I don't, I don't really um, hear all. I hear the depth, but I don't. And I think yeah. that's the magic of Def Leppard for fans. It it, it, is. it just rocks. You, you know. You have to do the the overall thing. Absolutely. Yeah. All the other stuff enhances it. And I think that, like I was saying earlier, you know, you can if you're gratuitous about stuff and trying to make it sound big, trying to make it sound like Queen or trying to sound like mm -hmm. Def Leppard, often you'll fail because it should be an enhancement. Yeah. Like even with the instruments, you know, all those those things on hysteria and all, all those songs, you know, they they um some they're they're very essential to to the song yeah. and and all the other extra little bits, they enhance it. Yeah. They enhance the, the the lead vocal and, yeah. and all that. Well, it's like a harmony. Yes. Right. You don't really you hear the song and you go, I love that song. You don't realize it's a you know four or five part harmony. And right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's been great having you in here. Dude. Pleasure, absolute Anytime pleasure. Anytime you want to come in here, bring some different guitars. I know, right? Rock out, maybe we'll, uh, you can show me some tricks next time. Yeah, well, next time we can, you got to learn that police one. That's, that's oh a, man, yeah, why do I have to start there? Because it's it's kind of hard work. Give you something to work <laughs> up Fantastic. to. Fantastic. Right, start, how about, on, on film. How, how, about, how about a pistol song or something? You know, well, we can see, start there. I, I, I love Steve Jones, He's one of my favorite players yeah. as well. You know, yeah. again, talking about the aggression, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I played on the radio with him the other week. We played a song together and, and, and stuff. So you follow him on Instagram at all? No, I don't. It's do, funny because he does these crazy things. Yeah. Where you like wear a weird outfit and he'll be in his bathroom playing country songs. Really? And, you know, from being a punk rock guitar player, yeah. um, you would think you know he's he's maybe a little more narrow as a player, you know. But he's he he knows a lot of stuff. He's he really does. Now I just think that the sound, you know, that you know. <laughs> The sound of it and the feel of it. Yeah, you know, just, a lot, a oh. lot of uh, a lot of feel in that. Totally. You know, a lot of people would talk about uh, punk rock, like, oh, those guys couldn't play, but that's not true. I agree. Yeah, that was they, they were amazing. Like, you know, I, I play in a band with Paul Cook. You know, we yeah. got two albums together, Man Rays, yeah. and he's amazing. He uses he, he plays the sticks upside down. Oh really? Yeah. So it's like just m really wax it. Yeah. And you know, even in Def Leppard, uh, Mark Lang would reference him. He'd go. Yeah, a bit more like Cookie. We want, we want that, you know, that aggression. Snap. Yeah, and a lot of drummers they don't just like kind of hitting like that, and he would just pound it. Yeah. So it's it's great playing with him because he, you know, he just yeah. he does that. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Pleasure. Anytime. Cheers. Cheers.